Welcome to the Gamers Inn. Come on in, pull up a chair next to the fire. Looks like you've had a long journey. I'm your host, Jocelyn, and joining me as always is my co-host, Ryan. Hello, Ryan. I'm back. You are back. I know, I said as always, but really, not as always, because somebody totally ditched me last week. Man, March. Who knew <laughs> that, like, when we... March has been we... rough. Yeah, when we switched to Friday nights, it was like, you know, we're gamers, we can make Fridays work, it's fine. And All then, we ever like, do is game on Friday nights. Exactly. It's been a long week. You just want to play some games. And then this March, Friday has just been, oh, something on every Friday. So <laughs> I apologize to the listeners because I think we've had more Saturday shows this week than we, or this week, this month. <laughs> this month, yeah. Your mic totally just messed up too. Oh, man. See? <laughs> Even my mic doesn't want me to be recording on a Saturday. Oh, there we go. usually do this on a Friday. Come on, man. <laughs> Try to keep up. Yeah. So last week we had the fantastic Kim from Ladies of Leet join me on, I think, God, I think we did that on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Our gamers in recording times have been all over the place. So very much apologize to all the people who usually like to watch us on Friday nights. But I have been streaming a lot of games on Friday nights mm -hmm. when we haven't been able to do the show mostly Diablo 3 because honestly dude oh my god I forgot how much fun it is and I think <laughs> that the whole like loot 2.0 makes a difference but at the same time like seriously so awesome have mm. you been playing a lot of that lately uh, as much as I can um we last weekend I had uh, uh the reason I, I couldn't have a show is I had a bit of a guys weekend guys brought their <laughs> computers over and we just played video games i swear we were up uh, friday night we were up till six in the morning then saturday night we were up till six in the morning and we basically that made sounds it a whole the... lot like my friday night last week actually <laughs> yeah oh it was a lot of fun we made it through the entirety almost of diablo 3 like nice. we started right from the beginning and went to about act end of act 3 on torment 2 just getting loot mm. and uh, you're right loot 2.0 just sort of reinvents the sort of um the fun loop Whereas you're just every encounter, oh, there's a blue, okay, let's kill it and see what we get. Mm -hmm. So it's been a lot of fun. and uh, But I, I was kind of getting tired of the grind, you know, like just mm -hmm. doing the same content over and over again. I mean, at a certain point, your character, it just becomes this and you don't even like that. Just, it, <laughs> you know, you're moving your fingers. This looks really bad. Yeah, it but does. like it's really, really bad. <laughs> it's like you're tickling something. I don't know. No. Oh, <laughs> um, but it's just, it becomes kind of boring. So it's nice that we have some new content mm -hmm. to kind of explore. And I've been, uh, start, I started act five a couple days ago and really enjoying some new content for Diablo three. Oh, good. I haven't actually started act five yet. Um, mm -hmm. I played, well, Joel and I killed Diablo last weekend, which was Sweet. the first time ever. So that was really fun. And then um, on Friday night, actually, I played for like four hours straight, I think. I was trying to nice. upload the Gamers in episodes onto YouTube. And I was like, why the hell is this one taking so long? Like, what is going on? This is like everything else is done. There was like five episodes. Sorry about that. There was like five episodes <laughs> that I had to <laughs> upload. And I was just like, oh, man, like, why is this one just hanging forever? Stupid YouTube. And then when it finally finished processing, it was four and a half hours of me playing Diablo. And I was like, oh, right, because there wasn't a Gamers in. <laughs> I was like, YouTube probably doesn't need to see this, but it's up there now. So <laughs> and you know what? It's it's there. Yeah. And it, it showcases loot 2.0. And yep. I think people dig it. So after I played Diablo for like four and a half hours, I was like, oh, I just got an email saying that Dills went live. And this is literally two o'clock in the morning. I'm like, oh, Dills just went live. I'll just pop in and say hi. So I popped in and I was like, hey, you know, have fun playing Hearthstone. And he was like, oh my God, why don't you jump in? Come on, we'll have so much fun. And I was like, oh, I don't know. It's like two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and then so I was like, okay, fine. All right. All right. Okay. Done. I'm going, I'm going to play. And we played Hearthstone. We did um, like 10, ran no, not 10, sorry, seven games of random decks and I kicked his butt. And then nice. we did like deck building. So we built a hunter deck and then we did like arena runs and I went to bed at like 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> I forgot how much fun that was, you know, just staying up. It's so until true. I've missed it so night. much. I yeah. usually try to be like, I mean, my job has been so demanding lately and I've been like gaming, but not a ton. And it was just like, mm -hmm. oh, you know what? I am just going to, 
I, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to stay up. I'm, you know, had a few drinks. By the end, we were both drunk and tired <laughs> and streaming. So we were like, we kept losing and losing and losing and losing. We're like, okay, <laughs> maybe our decision making skills have been altered. <laughs> we should probably just go to bed. <laughs> well, that's where Diablo comes in handy because it's literally yeah. just <laughs> click, clicking. Click, 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 you click. <laughs> I uh, have been uh, I have been playing a lot of the Crusader, though, since the actual Ooh. Reaper of Souls, um, not patch, I guess, expansion dropped. And that was mm -hmm. um, uh, not Monday, Tuesday. So my Crusader is now like level 20 and I've gone back to the Wizard and the Demon Hunter and neither one of them is as fun as the... Um, what's it with Crusader? Like, so much fun, dude. Have you played it yet? I, I played about ten or fifteen levels of the Crusader, and I'm I agree with you. And I wonder if it's because we haven't played a melee character yet. Do you think that could be the case? I don't think so. I mean, I am enjoying the melee character part of it, but at the mm -hmm. same time, it's almost like it's very paladin-ish, right? So it's yeah. almost like half casting, half melee. Like I've got the power that like throws the spectral hammers in the loop around me. So I'm like hitting mm -hmm. things before I even get anywhere close. So mm -hmm. it's kind of this mix. And then you have like the consecrate spell, which is the damage to dudes and health to your allies sort of thing. And, you know, so it has all these kind of different spell effects that go along with whacking it in the face. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it. And it's different because I'm used to, um, I played so much with the Demon Hunter that trying to manage, like, the discipline and the hatred and, you know, all of these different things. And then, you know, just going to the Crusader, it's so easy. It's just like, I can't even remember what it's called, but it's a white globe. I don't, Holy Power, maybe, or Faith or something. I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. I, I saw that it was just your one sort of pool of mm -hmm. mana. And, it's so uh, much easier. Yeah, it, it is easier. I, I've i only gotten the first two spells, and um, the best part, I think the best part of the design of that class and, and keeping you interested is the um, rush spell, like the rush and shield bash kind of oh, thing. Oh, yeah, the shield bash is awesome. I yeah. keep trying all the other um, abilities in that, like, slot, and nothing mm -hmm. does as much damage, and nothing is so satisfying as, like, seeing a bad guy and being, like, you know, five steps away and just going, like, rah, boom, in the face. <laughs> like, yes, yeah, well, I am badass. It's super handy because as you get, as you start playing in, in uh, higher difficulties, um, those monsters that will summon other monsters and kind of stay out of the fray are even more dangerous than they are on normal. So mm. being able to skip past all the mobs and hit that guy who's summoning them and get rid of him quickly is super handy. Mm. And I, I just love zipping around with the Crusader, <laughs> and I can't wait to get farther along. Mm -hmm. And I was worried that I wasn't going to enjoy it enough to want to play through the entire game again with that character. Mm -hmm. But I forgot that you kind of, you get your own slice of story for each character. You do, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's been really nice. Yeah, I've, I've enjoyed it a lot and I've been playing through a lot of the same content because I played my wizard up to 27 and then we started the brand new characters and that character is my demon hunter and I've got that up to 52 or 53. That's the one that we killed Diablo with. Sweet. And then uh, now my crusader's up to 20 again and I actually, I really like act one. Act two, I can take it or leave it, but act one is really fun. And I've even like gone back and farmed a couple different areas. And like, I mm -hmm. really like just the design of it, the story, the, you know, finding out your Nephilim, going to the drowned temple, like all of those different areas in act one are just so much fun. I like, yeah. uh, I like the boss too. Um, Mag Magda, I think the butterfly lady, she has right, a really yeah. cool design. Yeah. Hey, she, she's really cool. Um, actually, Act One's really strong. I mean, mm -hmm. you have the Skeleton King, you have the Butcher, True. Uh, Magda. Uh, you know, we're not gonna. I don't know. We could, but I'm not gonna spoil it. But there's just <laughs> a lot of moments in that game, uh, especially with Act One, that are really powerful. And I, I agree with you. Act Two, having played through it uh, a couple of times, it is probably. You know, it's not the dark middle chapter because mm -hmm. it's kind of boring. It is boring. Um, it's really boring. Yeah, and Belial really isn't that interesting as a boss because he no. just kind of sits in the middle and you wail on him. But uh, I found 
I found Belial more intimidating than Diablo because once you get him down really low, then he goes into the second stage where he just gets absolutely huge, right? Mm -hmm. I still don't find him difficult to beat, but just the fact that he's so big. And then, like, we did the fight against Diablo. And, like, I do realize that Diablo, like, um, spoilers, 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 <laughs> Diablo, like, um, infest Leah or whatever. Basically, they use Leah to bring Diablo back into the world. So he ends up being very tall, very thin, and has, like, flappy grandma boobs. And I'm just like, like, Joel and I were, like, doing the fight. We're like, does he have, does he have boobs? Why did, why does Diablo have boobs? No, that must this. be, like, armor or something. No, no, they're flopping. That's boobs. <laughs> so it, they are definitely, like, flappy armor boobs because, like, <laughs> If you were to shoot an arrow, they'd probably bounce off. But they're like they're they kind of hang in yeah. front of his chest. It's weird. It's, it is weird. It's a weird design. I found that, um, like I said, the second stage of Belial, and then um, uh, the guy that has like three or four different mouths like his mouth like opens this like horizontally and vertically mm. at the same time, and he's got like lava. It's the um, the boss guy in Act. Four, three? three, three, yeah, with the yeah, keep I, and the attack on the keep, yeah, that boss guy. Maz something. I think it starts with an A. Asmodan. Asmodan. That's it. Asmodan sounds like a dinosaur. Mm -hmm. Um, no, he's he's he cool. has a like, cool design too, and he was intimidating mm -hmm. and threatening. And then you get to Diablo, and you're like, really? <laughs> yeah, Diablo's kind of just a guy who walks around and, and throws fire at you. It, it was kind of like a, 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 a Bowser fight, it felt like. You know, <laughs> oh my like, god, nailed it. That's exactly yeah. what it was. <laughs> you know, if, if, and it, it didn't last yeah. very long either, because we were on hard mode, I think. Mm -hmm. But by There's the time two. we hit him, we were, because of the XP boost and everything else, we were like 51 or 52. So, like, yeah. we had way over-leveled the fight. Like, we were just crazy, crazy powerful. And it was kind of like, oh, and Diablo's dead. Yeah. Well, okay. I've been playing so much Diablo, especially with that weekend with that 100% bonus. And I know mm -hmm. you guys talked about this last week, or at least according to the notes you did. I haven't listened. But <laughs> I, I assume you did. But it was really great because we were playing and we were wondering. It's like, oh, man, we're just leveling. I, like, got to level 60 and then got 39 levels of Paragon. Oh, my God. So, so my, yeah. So my Crusader's rocking it as a <laughs> level 14, 39 Paragon. So and Paragon levels give you extra powers, right? Because Kim and I talked about this last week. Because I was just yeah. like, why would you Paragon level? What does that even mean? <laughs> oh, man. It's it's really cool. Like, before it was just a number, I think, and maybe hmm. gave stats to your single character. It was, But now it's account-wide. Oh, okay. So when you gain a Paragon level, um, you get you get a Paragon level, and then you get a bunch of skill points. You get one skill point, and there's four columns to hmm. choose from. So the first, you get a skill point, it goes into the first column. You're like, okay, you can choose to upgrade your damage, your crit, your health. And then you gain another Paragon level, and then it goes over to the next column, and you can upgrade your resistance, your armor. I'm getting all of this wrong, but <laughs> it's close <laughs> enough to illustrate that. The like, point, yes. <laughs> the more Paragon levels you get, the higher you can get like certain per certain uh, stats up, mm -hmm. and there's no cap on that because you oh, can cool. certain um, certain bonuses can be infinite. Uh, I have heard there is like a soft cap in the sense of like a database field, but no one's hit it yet. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like you can, you know, you and you can reset your Paragon uh, stats at any time. So say like you're in yeah. battle and you're you're in your Crusader and you had set up your Paragon points to be for your Demon Hunter. So you like just increased all your crit and damage. So for your Crusader, you can go, well, I'm going to reset this and put it more into armor. And strength and, and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's really cool. And it's a great way to kind of encourage you to say, keep playing your farming with your 60 and getting those, or I guess 70 now, and farming mm -hmm. your Paragon. And then when you want to start a new character, you can increase the difficulty because your character's already got some bonus stats. It's, yeah. it's really like, I don't know what happened. And I hesitate to blame the original level or, uh, you know, game dev, uh, the uh, Jay Wilson guy. I doubt it's his fault, but man, changing who was in charge of this of the development of this game i don't know what happened but all of a sudden they just had all these amazing changes mm. that just took diablo 3 and, and made it from took it as a good game 
and made it into this great game that everybody wants to play. Very true. It's weird. And I know Jay Wilson, he's a nice guy and everything, <laughs> it but may not even like there could it's be probably some, not even his fault. There but... could be some things like Paragon points that were always mm. meant to be in the game. They just didn't think that they had to introduce them so quickly because they didn't think that people were going to blow through and kill Diablo in the first like two days of release, right? So yeah. I think that that could have a lot to do with it as well. But uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I still haven't moved on to Act 5 yet, which is the new Reaper of Souls story content because I'm only level 50 and I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> uh, it, it's a direct continuation. So I, I mean, as long as you continue along the level of it is a little more difficult because I found like I was rocking uh, like Torment 1 uh, master level. You can always decrease your level. So if you go in at a higher level and you like say you were playing hard, uh, you could go down to normal if you really needed to. I found oh, that Act 5 so I had to do that. I had been playing my Crusader and got my Crusader up to round 20. And then I switched over to the wizard that I hadn't played in two years because I was like, oh man, I remember the wizard being so much fun. And then I was like <laughs> running into fights on hard and it was like people were run one shotting me. And I was like, oh, <laughs> there's actually like probably a good 10 minutes of the stream last night where I was just like, and I died and I died. Okay, let's revive in town. And I died. <laughs> it, it stops being fun at that point. Like I, I at this like if I'm dying a lot and I'm hitting that wall, I would much rather get less loot than continue to die. And like it's just it's not it's not mm -hmm. about the loot for me. It's about at least with Act Five, it's about experiencing the story. Then yeah. I can go back and and farm. I found you know? that uh, I was I was almost instantly dying when I was by myself and playing on hard and then I switched it down to normal and then I was doing okay but I was still dying pretty frequently and then yeah. I had a couple people from the uh, there's actually there's an a move clan in Diablo so I got invited to it I have no idea how you find it and ask for an invite or anything like that but you guys should all come and be part of the a move clan in Diablo because they're awesome people so I had some people uh, jump in from that and then uh, so uh, and that uh, Leo played with me as well so there was like the four of us going through and I was just like my character couldn't run fast enough to keep up then like we were just one shotting everything and I mean they had some um, paragon levels but is it paragon yeah. Okay. I, I know it's like Renegade and Paragon in Mass Effect. So whenever you say Paragon, I'm like, are we sure? Is that actually what it's called? There Hang are on no a Renegade second. levels. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, yeah. The between the four of us on normal, it was ridiculous, and I was just like, oh, why is there like this huge difference between normal and hard? Like, is there that jump again between hard and? whatever the next difficulty expert is yeah i think there is i mean really when you change difficulty levels it makes the mo monsters have more health and they mm -hmm. hit harder but also you're introducing um more varied special monsters so they have more um they have a more layered effect of like say they do chain lightning and they reflect damage or oh, okay. they poison splotches and they do fire um i because i found like when i was playing act five and even the end of Act 4, I was having no issues with the, just the trash. Mm -hmm. But it was the blues, the golds, and the purples that were just killing me. Like, mm. I, was, I was having to grind because, like, my, my guy would just keep dying. Um, so in that sense, you're probably best. If that's happening, like, the blues and yellows are taking you down, you got to kick it down oh no 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 the blues and yellows were not taking me down like the regular mm -hmm. like trash mobs were taking me down like i was getting Weird. just like swore oh. well, i was so squishy <laughs> well is this is this a mage you haven't played on loot 2.0 yet yes okay so so in that sense if you because we had a friend that we were playing with who hadn't gotten any new loot mm -hmm. and he was dying really quickly because even the, with the loot 2.0 i i think what happened was since they introduced all this higher armor they kicked up the monster difficulty as well. Oh, so you kind of have to be geared, right? Right. That um, would explain it. Because I literally, I was just like, oh, there's a, clearly I have town portaled home from somewhere because there was the portal sitting in the middle of town. So I'm like, you know, I'm just going to pick up right where I left off. Like, let's go. And so I portaled into the middle of a dungeon and it was literally like swarm dead. I was like, huh. <laughs> That's probably it then. <laughs> 
so it's yeah i think the point of it was to like start over from act one mm. so i i had that issue too when i was playing with my demon hunter like just hitting a wall yeah because i wasn't geared it's better now though i played for a couple yeah. hours geared up a little so it's fine <laughs> it just <laughs> took a little while but uh yeah, speaking of reflecting damage, for the first time today in South Park, I took one of my throwing knives right back in my face again. <laughs> I didn't even that know that that was a thing, but apparently I'm progressing further into the game and now they're actually, all the mobs are taking advantage of things like reflecting damage and they have different stances. So there's like regular stance that you can damage them with anything and then there's like stance like with holding up a shield sort of thing and then you have to hit them with range stuff or there's like with their kind of sword out straight and then whenever you throw anything at them they just flick it back at you and I was just like oh oh so much damage right in my face what the hell but I'm mm -hmm. uh I still haven't hit night two but <laughs> I'm uh, I'm in the battle for the school right now and like man oh man that game is so good I, I have yet to uh, to pick it up. I probably will wait for like a sale, but well, uh, it, it looks good. If you're not a huge South Park fan, then yes, you should probably wait for a sale. It's got like yeah. it has some things like we talked about last time. That I'm not going to go into again. Um, I find that um, well, one of your powers, like basically magic in the game, is farting, and it just I find that I don't like that mechanic. And I find it really difficult to control. And today I spent, like, I actually had to, <laughs> when I tell you the term, like, as I'm typing it into Google, I was just like, oh, man, I should not be Googling this. But I was literally, like, in this, like, bathroom trying to learn this new fart, which is, like, a new spell. And I just, it took so long because they, like, didn't tell you one of the key presses. And it just kept repeating the same tutorial over and over and over and over. And I was like, God oh, damn it. <laughs> And so, hmm. but I literally, I was sitting there, I was like, okay, this is like the 10th time that I've had this same, like, um, description from Randy telling me what it is. So I go to Google and I was like, oh, I shouldn't Google this, but learn new fart, Randy. <laughs> and I was just like, wait, South Park, South Park, South Park. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Have to it could add be a really, yeah. uh, really terrible uh, uh, <laughs> tutorial yeah. from Randy. But and I found that in general, with a lot of the like magic stuff in South Park, is that the tutorials around it, the um, descriptions and stuff, and telling you what buttons to press was really hard to follow. And it's mm -hmm. like it's a pretty complicated like stick movement, and so I, I just it's like you have to like hold right stick down and then like move left stick around and then right stick back up and then press a and stuff and it just yeah, one one combo. yeah one little move left or right will like mess the whole thing up and it's just like ah oh. and mm. then like learning how and where to point your butt is hard too and <laughs> story of my life yeah i know right i know yeah. <laughs> so uh, but other than I'm that really other than that mechanic i'm really enjoying it I think like the thing about the South Park game that I know like the reason I kind of I'm waiting is is well first off there's just a lot of games going on right now but <laughs> oh my god so also, many games <laughs> yeah like we're like I haven't even had a chance to dive into Second Son yet and I freaking love Infamous but uh, uh, with South Park the thing that really makes me want to play it is that you know the combat is described as like Super Mario RPG like Twitch based stuff like I mm -hmm. love that type of content. And I like about 75% of South Park's humor. Yeah. The other 25% I can admire, you know, like from a distance. Be like, ah, oh, <laughs> see how that could be funny. Yeah. But, uh, if I was I'm, into that kind of thing, I yeah, could see exactly. where that's coming from. <laughs> and it's not even like a gross out thing. Like, I'm cool with the gross out stuff. It's just like 25% of their humor just, it doesn't appeal to me. But no. like, three quarters of it, that's pretty good percentage. I mean, when you yeah. think about it. But, Stan's uh, sister threw a bloody tampon at me today. <laughs> it was unpleasant. I was just like, oh, guys, it's not funny. <laughs> that's, that's not, see that, no. that I, I wouldn't find It funny. was like her, her, cause she was a boss. And so that was one of her moves, her special abilities. She's the one with the braces, right? Yeah. The headgear. Yeah. yeah. Definitely don't like that character. I don't either. Now or before. <laughs> So there is a lot of that, but then there's a lot on the flip side that's really, really funny. So, exactly. and every once in a while, I'm just sitting in here giggling and then Joel just walk by and he'll be like, South Park. I'm like, South Park. <laughs> He's just like, oh, he doesn't get it at all. 
Do you play with headphones then? Yes. <laughs> Just in case. Like, I don't actually have it. speakers, so I play everything oh. with headphones. With a with head head uh, headphones. <laughs> with a headset or headphones, whichever you prefer. Not some weird hybrid of the two. I, I think headphones are a great way to play games. I, I my computer, my video card is the fans going on or something. It makes this awful clicking sound that now my friend had pointed out to me. So now I can not never hear it. So <laughs> I've been playing with the headphones and uh, especially Diablo and just admiring. You just get so much more of the sound. Yeah, you know, it's true. And you've got the nice stereo uh, headphones. So I have a really good set of gamer headphones, but they mm -hmm. hurt my head. Like my, cause they push, right? I have jaw problems which I think everybody knows yeah. now but they push right on the side of my face like right on my jaw and mm -hmm. I can only wear them for about 10 15 minutes before I get like migraine level headaches so I'm just like oh I'm stuck with my little apple ones yeah so I, I had that ear that it's cleared up now but before like for that week like I couldn't have giant headsets on because it just put pressure on this side of my face and it killed <laughs> Aww. Yeah, but now it's better, but I just don't want to stick anything in there. That's the last thing you want to do is stick something in, in something that, that hasn't been doing so well. Just give it a break. <laughs> Get some time. And then you can stick stuff in it. You know, no problems. South Park. Oh, South That's Park. description of yeah. that game. <laughs> so you haven't been playing South Park. What have you been playing? Well, besides Diablo. Besides Diablo. Uh, Another game that kind of dominated our, our Geek Weekend, and this was a bit of a gamble, but it's called Towerfall Ascension. This I was a. I've heard of this, but yeah, I have no idea what it's about. Well, I think the reason you heard about it is because it was one of the only games to come out on the Ouya that anybody gave two shits about. Oh, um, maybe that's why. Yeah. So like, wait, it was did like... you end up buying an Ouya? No, okay. but I, I I have been playing around with one, and they, it's not that great, but. <laughs> I, I've been, I, I've been trying to use it, and there's I've played demos and stuff on it, and I, I really haven't had enough time to give it a chance. But um, Towerfall, I did not play on the Ouya. Oh, okay. <laughs> I I uh, it came out on PS4, uh, and I picked it up for it's like fifteen dollars. It's out on PC as well. Um, but I, the reason I bought it is because it is a multiplayer focused game, and we, I was gonna have four guy. We were gonna have four guys in total. So I was like, everybody bring their controllers. Let's give this Towerfall game a shot. Um, it was like 2 in the morning, and <laughs> we had our energy drinks and vodka, and we were like, let's let's try this Towerfall business. And it's <laughs> it's a, a an arena brawler where you play as a archer, and you're just, it's like PvP, and it's a free-for-all, and you go at it, and so it's just everyone archer. is archers? Yeah, everyone's an archer, and basically you're like jumping around, and you're... You know, you can dodge uh, similar to Smash Brothers, like midair and uh, on the ground. Uh, it's kind of like a, like a, I don't know, like a, a blink, similar to like some of the moves in, in Warcraft. But uh, so you, you have your archery and you, you can like, it's really weird. Like it, it doesn't really require skill because when you shoot, the, art, the, the arrow kind of like sometimes like curves up. It's got a bit of an assist on it. But the game is super snappy and super quick. So rounds last about tops a minute. And you just go in, and it's wild and frantic, and you're shooting arrows at each other. And you're just hooting and hollering. And we ended up playing for like four hours. Oh, my God. <laughs> we are just loving it. And it's, it's similar to like Smash Brothers in the sense that you're fighting, but it's super quick. So even if you die right away, tops you're waiting like 30 seconds for the next round. Oh, wow. Yeah. And there's like special arrows that you can use. So like say you get... Once the first stage is just standard arrows, battle it out. The next stage you might play might have special arrows like uh, they're called bramble arrows. And what happens is when you shoot the arrow and it misses the guy, it'll hit the ground and then you know surround that platform with uh, thorns like bramble. Oh, okay. So that so that creates a whole dynamic of not only do you have to dodge the arrows, but you can't land on the platform because then you'll die because it's a one hit kill. Oh. It's a really hard game to kind of explain, but it's one of those games you have to play to to really love. And it's a local only game, so there's no online multiplayer. So that's I just wanted to make sure everyone knew that because if it's on, out on Steam, you can go pick it up, but unless you have multiple people sitting down with you, you're not experiencing the beauty of the game because mm. it, it is it is literally the return 
of couch co-op. I have not had that much fun <laughs> with three or four people playing on a video game system. It's great. Well, and that was kind of the whole point of the Ouya, right? They really wanted to bring back couch gaming and, you know, everybody all together and all that kind of stuff. Less online play, more home play, all that kind of thing. So it makes sense that this would be one of their kind of banner title sort of things, you yeah. know? It it was like, the, don't get me wrong, like the Ouya has games. It's just a lot of them are available on other other systems. And this mm. was their big, like, we have Towerfall. And I feel like Towerfall couldn't, just couldn't get away fast enough. Right. Like, they're, they're out on Steam now. They're out on Sony platforms. I'm sure they're going to be aiming for Microsoft next. And I think it's great. Like, I don't think Towerfall, the, de the developers behind Towerfall were ever like, screw the Ouya. They were happy to be on the Ouya. But they wanted their game on as many platforms as possible to Which allow makes them sense. to enjoy it. And, I mean, I we would have played on the Ouya if we had enough controllers. Like, I know you can sync it, but it's, I don't know if it's like, it doesn't really show, that's the beauty of the PS4, or, or not the beauty, but it's sort of the downside of new consoles is that it doesn't showcase the power of the PS4, but it's just hella fun. It's so good. <laughs> It, just go watch like a YouTube of it and you'll totally like you'll get it and it's like mm. really quick, really fast multiplayer action and it's it's basically archery. Mm. It's it's really weird. You you would think like an archery PvP game would be kind of hard and not very fun, but uh yeah, this is the best I've ever had with archery, hands down. You know what archery PvP I'm looking forward to? I don't know. Elder ESO Tr which launches tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow at 8. Tomorrow at 8 a.m. Early. I'm so, so excited. So uh, it's going to be 8 a.m. for me. That is uh, 7 a.m. Eastern time, for those of you who are wondering. Um, I can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. I don't know if I'm actually going to be up at 8 a.m. I'm going to set an alarm and see how it goes based on how long my raid goes tonight. But I can't wait. I was in the forums all day today, uh, not the actual like ESO forums, but the uh, AIE forums because there's going to be a guild presence in the game. They're nice. playing the um, the faction that I wanted to play, so which doesn't really matter because I do have the Imperial Edition with the Explorer pack, which means I can play either the Imperial, which can go in any faction, or I can play any race in any faction. So it's, uh, it's going to be so much fun. And at first I was kind of thinking... You know, any race in any faction could be really weird for PvP, but it's kind of hard to tell who's on your team anyway. There's like little arrows above your head to show, like little markers to show who your teammates are. Mm -hmm. But with all of the like hoods and masks and things like that, all the armor makes it really difficult to tell the difference between the races anyway. So it's, I don't think it's going to be that much of a difference. And I'm really, really excited. It's, I think, the first, you can jump into PvP as of level 10, but mm -hmm. there's, like, each faction has, like, their zones that you can move through and just play PvE to level, or you can go into the middle, which is Cyrodiil, and that's the PvP area, and it's like a battleground, but it can have up to 2,000 people in it. I'm just like, oh my god, <laughs> so I, much I PvP! Really I really hope that game pans out, like, and people really, like, it, it, people enjoy it uh, because of, you know, and, and it matches the, the developer's enthusiasm, mm -hmm. right? But, like, I I am, I'm holding off, but I won't wait long to jump in if, if every, like, I know a few people are playing, like, uh, with you as well, like, well, not with you, but, you know, in the game. Mm -hmm. So, it, I'm, got my ears to the ground. Not this one, because it's still a little sore, but this one. <laughs> the other one, I yeah. Hear. It's, uh, it looks so much fun. It looks like everything I would want out of a Skyrim-type MMO. Um, it's, you know, harkens back to all the things I love about Elder Scrolls, and it just looks fantastic. And it doesn't quite seem like it's as fleshed out as, say, a Skyrim, you know, where every book in Skyrim can be open and read and every little box has something in it, even if it's an apple. And, you know, like it doesn't seem to be to have as many containers and stuff. But at the same time, I'm kind of looking forward to that because then I can just walk into a house and I know if it has a chest that I'm going to get something good as opposed right. to just like, OK, now I have to check crate number one and crate number two and then small bag and then big burlap sack. And then, you know, and all I get out of it is a piece of cheese. And I'm like, damn it. 
<laughs> yeah, so it's not Elder Scrolls Six, but it's it's yeah. more of an you know it's a, a I don't want to say watered down, but a, a trimmed down version. Like the yeah. fat's been trimmed because it's an MMO. You mean you need to scale for for the amount of players, and it's exactly. hard to do that when you have to calculate how many apples are in the room. But <laughs> I think that uh, I'm I, I'm watching it closely, and uh, it it looks really good. It looks like a lot of fun. I just want to make sure that it's it's different enough from every other MMO that I've that I've bur- been burned out on mm-hmm. before, and I I really like the story. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's like Warcraft in the sense that I'm invested. Yeah. So I think instantly the lore gets me. Yeah, that's something I think that Elder Scrolls really has going for it in the fact that they're launching a new MMO is that like there are there's Daggerfall, Morrowind, Oblivion and Skyrim that all came before and have serious lore tied to them. Everyone's familiar with the characters and the differences between the races and you know why different factions would have formed and you know everyone knows what they're racing for and what they're fighting for and then at the same time as you have this like faction war going on there's also like the bigger Daedric story and I mean, obviously, the Daedric princes are always the big villain in any kind of Elder Scrolls game, but it's just like so, so good. And good. The, I've seen the trailer now, like probably five or six times, where they have that big portal thing with the big um, chains that come down, and I'm just like, man, this looks so good! Like I can't wait. It's gonna be amazing. I hope so. I, I hope it's amazing. I would never, you know, I would never want to see an MMO like not do well just because mm-hmm. I don't have time to play it. So, I I think that uh, it's it's one of the stronger ones I think coming out this year. Yeah. I mean, it's probably one of the most high profile ones. I mean, it has a lot more to. I think it has a lot more to prove than Wildstar does because of its connection to mm-hmm. an established franchise. But true. Um, the voice acting I, yeah. in it apparently is amazing and I posted mm-hmm. something on my Facebook a couple of days ago talking about all the different voice actors and the people that they've got are just so good and I know that the the first real person that I ran into um, I think he's the prophet or something and he's voiced by the guy that played Dumbledore after Richard Harris passed away oh. and I don't like him in Harry Potter but I loved him in Elder Scrolls and it's the kind of thing where you're just like Wow, that's really good voice acting. Wait a minute, I know that. Who is that? Oh my god, it's so and so. And you're just like, oh man, it's so good. And it was really funny because when I was playing, he was one of the only voiceovers that was finished. Everything else was robots. So, I mean, he really stood out. <laughs> but at the same time, it was just so solid and so good. And all the different actors they have, the, oh, I can't wait. I know I've said John that like Cleese. eight times. Yeah. Yeah. I really like him. I like his voice acting. So, I don't know. It's it, it's definitely like high profile, but it's also got a, a lot to lose if it doesn't do well. You know, like I think it will do well. I think it's really heavily focused on the RPG part of it. So mm-hmm. basically, when you're playing PVE, I think it's going to be very much like Skyrim. It's going to be a similar experience. I don't necessarily know how much grouping up you're going to have to do. I hope you can group and I hope you can quest with your friends without it being like wanting to pull my fingernails out with my teeth or something. Because I mean, honestly, Wildstar hated that. That was the worst part was trying to group quest. But Mm. so if Elder Scrolls has figured out a way to do that, then I'll be happy. Um, But I think they're really focusing on single player RPG type stuff in your faction areas. And then the PVP aspect. So everything that they've done with these mega servers is so interesting. It's like you can pick what, like you're all on one North American server or one EU server, and then you can pick your campaign. So that's like which PVP area you're going to be in within Cyrodiil. Mm -hmm. And it just like, I can't believe that you're going to be able to PVP like a thousand people versus a thousand people like that seems uh, do you know how they're gonna make that work i have no idea they just talk about their new pvp architecture (laughs) Mm. and i've been trying not to read too too much i think i've read like two reviews watched like probably 10 or 15 minutes of actual in-game footage i'm really trying not to get spoiled because i really want to go into it and learn it straight from the beginning and just be fresh um, 
so yeah, I don't 100% know, but I do know that they've referenced the new PvP architecture and the mega server and the, you know, all this kind of stuff. So yeah. if they can pull it off, it's supposed to be uh, 2,000 people. And I don't think it has to be a one-to-one -one ratio. I think it's just 2,000 people can be in at one time and it can show you up to 200 people on your screen at once. Wow. Yeah. Well, I hope they pull that off because that <laughs> sounds like mag all over again <laughs> and that game was atrocious uh so i don't know i think i, I but that was years ago and yeah. this is now and uh obviously they wouldn't be touting it if if it wasn't gonna you know work as expected so yeah. I, I i'm looking forward to to seeing it and if early access starts tomorrow we can expect to see like some streams up possibly. Like, Absolutely. Are you streaming? Or are you I am going to be streaming to... tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Good. Um, I don't know what time I'm going to start, but it's probably going to be me and my coffee first thing tomorrow morning. Um, I don't really know if there's any point to streaming first thing because first thing for me, like everyone else in North America is still asleep. So although maybe yeah. I'll get some Europeans, you never know. Maybe. But that uh, is early. On it a is really early on a Sunday. So. It's, uh, like I said, 8 a.m. my time, 7 a.m. Eastern, which makes it, like, what, 4 a.m. Pacific? Mm. <laughs> so, we'll see. We'll see. I might do some streaming early, but I will definitely be streaming most of what I play tomorrow. So, cool. I'll probably give PvP a try. What they were saying is it because um, you can go from level, I can't remember what their cap is, 50 or 60, but you can start at level 10. And what they do is when you go into PvP, they just like even everybody out. So even if you're a level 10 going up against a level 60, the 60 isn't necessarily going to win. So that's something else I really like is there's not going to be, I mean, there could be people grouping up against, so like a group of five going on one single person and that would suck. But it's not necessarily going to be like, you know, one-on-one -on -one ganking and meanness. <laughs> right. So did you pre-order it? I thought you pre-ordered the physical copy, did you not? I, oh, this is another awesome, amazing thing that I totally forgot to tell you. So I pre-ordered the physical copy and I got the mm -hmm. Imperial Edition and then it said, you know, like, oh, five days early access. And I was like, oh, well, that, you know, that's awesome. But clearly it doesn't actually apply to me because I'm getting a physical copy. No, no. They sent me an email like last week, Future Shop did, saying, here's your code. Thank you for pre-ordering Elder Scrolls, blah, 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 blah. And I literally copy and pasted the code. And then it's like, thank you, early access granted, blah, 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 blah. I was like, wow. So I don't even have to wait. I thought I was going to have to wait. And then I thought I was going to have to wait to actually get the physical thing, which, you know, then there's shipping issues and I may not actually get it on release day. No, mm. no, I have the game. I may not have my statue on release day, but it's coming. I had my first delayed shipment from Future Shop with Diablo. Oh no, I saw yeah. that. It was a one extra day and I was like, I'm, I have to try Amazon next. Because I mean, I, I, I feel bad like giving up. Their, they've been doing so well for years and then finally they, but mm -hmm. as a gamer, and I'm sure you can, you can understand this, as a gamer, we expect, we want to play day one. Yeah, uh, they've been late with everything for me except for Mass Effect 3. Yeah, and it's tough to support a company that doesn't live up to those expectations mm -hmm. and i know it's free shipping and all that fun stuff but if if another company for the same price or lower can provide a better service i might as well switch obviously yeah, i i didn't get a response back from them and it was just petty bitching on my part but you know like I, it was still, <laughs> but it's important damn it <laughs> it is important and you know in an age where they're com competing with a, a digital system where mm -hmm. i can download it at midnight the day of release you're not doing much for yourself yeah, by, by not being getting a, a day, day late anymore. on top of that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, mind you, I, you know, I would have had like an hour to play, but even just unboxing it and, and getting in there and looking at the manuals and, mm -hmm. and t smelling the disc, like <laughs> that is that is part of it. You know, even is if it, it takes, now smelling it the disc? That's a thing. Smelling the disc, <laughs> disc. Just in case you perverts out there are hearing something different. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I, but yeah, even if I spend half an hour, you know, just playing around with the box, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Jocelyn, <laughs> really? You're worse than the chat room. I know I am. I know I am. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really looking forward to ESO tomorrow. And, uh, I don't think that my computer is going to have a problem with that 2000 people PVP area because it's a doghouse system. 
And Ryan and I really appreciate the continued support of our sponsor, Doghouse, as well as our fans. Thank you very much. We do have a Patreon right now. I'm totally going to throw this into the Doghouse plug. We're going to talk about it later as well. But um, I do, I just, I feel like we have to say thank you to the fans because it's been really, really awesome. And it's been, you know, our fans have been great and Doghouse has been great. And for those of you fans who do want a doghouse, you can use the code THEGAMERSIN to grab one and get some extra RAM. So head on over to doghousesystems.com and get your order on. And that brings us to our topic of the week, which not surprisingly is Facebook buying mm. Oculus Rift. What? <laughs> like, so not surprising from a, I guess, business standpoint, Kind of surprising from an Oculus Rift business standpoint, only because Oculus Rift was kickstarted. And this is really the first time that we've kind of seen something like this, where mm. a product has been kickstarted and then, you know, purchased for such a huge amount of money. In general, it's like the startup's wet dream, right? Is, you know, you have this little idea, you really, really push to get it made, and then all of a sudden somebody buys you for billions of dollars. Like, that's the dream, right? It is the dream. Uh, let's clarify there. Like, <laughs> Kickstarter is a weird thing that exists between two, you know, two extremes of purchasing a product. Like it, Kickstarter has come out as saying, we are not a pre-order service. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you're not, you're not pre-ordering things. Yeah. But you're also not investing in a company. And we're not the first, we're probably the last people to talk about this because this happened, I think, like during the week. So everybody's had their chance. We've all listened to people's opinions. But really, it exists between two things. Like it's not a pre-order. Mm -hmm. And it's also not a way to invest in a company. It's sort of sandwiched in the middle where it's a good faith system of, you know, here's 50 bucks, here's a sticker set, you know, like mm -hmm. an exchange of services to help this company get, get going with yeah. the Oculus Rift. And it makes perfect sense to take Facebook's money because it's $400 million. It was $2 billion in total, but... 400 million in cash mm -hmm. gives Oculus Rift the ability to say, awesome, we have money, let's build, let's skip a couple of revisions and build the device we can with this money we now yeah. have. You know, like this reduces the amount of, like, could you imagine, uh, I, I can't think of a device that has uh, evolved, but say like the iPhone was made by a startup and the first one comes out, it's, it's good enough. But imagine if they could skip to say the iPhone four mm -hmm. in, in without waiting four years for those revisions. Yeah, uh, I, I do. I do understand how it's a good move for Oculus Rift, but at the same time, I can see, in particular, the Kickstarter backers that backed at the very high levels, like Notch, who is the yeah, creator of uh, Minecraft. So. He backed this startup company coming from a place of, you know, kind of building his own empire from the ground up sort of thing at a very large amount. I think he backed them for what was it? $10,000, $20,000, something like I think that. It was 10, I think 10 it was million. 10. So he gives a big chunk of money to invest in this company that he thinks is doing really cool things really good things for the gaming industry as well as, you know, the future of virtual reality because realistically it's it's been really crappy for a very long time. You know, like they keep promising all the cool things that we can do with virtual reality and nobody delivers. Oculus Rift seems like it could be the first one to actually really deliver. So he backs at this big amount of money. He's working with the company He's trying to develop some sort of virtual Minecraft space, which, mm -hmm. by the way, sounds freaking awesome. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, without, and not necessarily that companies should have to consult with their Kickstarter uh, backers, but mm -hmm. basically, even the people that they were working with had no real idea that this was happening. And I mean, especially given the fact that it's Facebook. There's just an ew factor there. Like, I it's like yeah. Facebook is my 
first of all, I don't like Facebook. It's not my social network of choice, but mm -hmm. it is like the virtual representation of my real life. So if you make a virtual, virtual reality, isn't that just like the virtuals are canceling each other out? And now we're just back to reality again. It's like, Jill posts a picture of pancakes and now I can go into the Oculus Rift and eat pancakes or I can go in the other room and eat pancakes. Like, <laughs> you know, it just, <laughs> like, I think I, what's I the understand. point? <laughs> Like, I understand where you're coming from, and I'm not a big fan of Facebook or, or what Facebook does, but Facebook's got one great thing going for it, and uh, it's Facebook's really popular, and they're popular for one reason in terms of users, because they make a product that a majority of people like. Like, we don't like Facebook. Yeah, some listeners out there don't like Facebook, but there are... I think it's in the millions. It's not billions yet. And they, or did they hit a billion No, users? they have a billion users. I'm 99% so, sure. Then, okay, well, well, let's just say they have a billion people that love Facebook, you know? like That use uh, Facebook. <laughs> okay, they have millions of people that <laughs> <Yes>. love Facebook. <laughs> so in that sense, like, they can make a product that a majority of people like, mm -hmm. and they have the money to throw around to kind of kickstart, to kind of give these companies yes. a little bit of extra A head funding. start, yeah. You know, a head start, and I think that uh, as long as Facebook, you know, doesn't get in there with their fingers and stuff they uh then oculus rift has a chance of doing something really cool with this money that's um, true but i just i think what worries me the most is <laughs> the kind of all-encompassing nature of virtual reality and facebook's track record with stealing my information and really shitty privacy policies so i just i really worry about kind of merging my reality with Facebook. It I don't like it. I was so excited about Oculus Rift and the kind of implications for, first of all, gaming, obviously, but second of all, just in general, if we can make virtual reality, like think of all the things you could use virtual reality for, for training purposes. You know, you no longer have to put anyone in danger to train someone. So, you know, you've got military applications, you've got science applications and, and like medicine applications what if he could train a surgeon and he never actually had to cut into a person like well, that, ah. that, that will still exist and and does exist but but it i don't will, know like I, it will though like it, we're not we're not you know it's not going to be like like this page uh to you know perform maybe it will be surgery. you don't know <laughs> i don't know but we didn't know it wasn't going to be that before this stuff started coming and we haven't seen the indication of that with with the uh what developers are doing with these dev kits i mean we've i just seen... hope that facebook doesn't bleed into Oculus Rift, like I know that they probably want to push it forward because of the implications it could have for Facebook and the network that exists there. But I don't want, I don't want that. I don't want any VR in my Facebook. I don't want any Facebook in my VR. Like I want there to be a just clear cut like boundary, and that boundary is now blurred. And I can see if I had backed it on Kickstarter, I would be pissed right now. I'd be like, well, why did you need my money then? Like, where's my money going to? What's going on? Like, don't I have a say? And I know, again, we've talked about how it's not actually an investment. It's like that weird in-between area. But at the same time, like, you feel a little bit kind of betrayed almost. I know, like, yeah. I backed um, I backed a Kickstarter for a very significant chunk of money to me. It was, mm -hmm. you know, the better part of 150 bucks for really, really cool nerd makeup and it's like um the nail wrap thing so they have all right. these really cool patterns and they're really easy to put on they last forever and like there was like ninja turtle stuff and firefly stuff and you know all these really cool designs and it took them a really long time to deliver they were supposed to deliver last september by the time i actually got them it was march and around Christmas, they had this announcement saying that ThinkGeek was carrying these nail wraps. And I was just like, well, what the hell? Like, I still don't have mine as a Kickstarter, as a Kickstarter backer, but yeah. ThinkGeek is selling them. Like, how how is that fair? And I mean, it was a limited run and it was, you know, just a limited number of patterns. And as a Kickstarter backer, I had so many more. But there's still that feeling of like selling out and betrayal when you're like, but I backed you. You know, like as an investor sort of thing, you know, there's that relationship that you build through Kickstarter that I think these companies are in kind of a weird situation and they almost have mm -hmm. to be careful because so easily you can get bad PR by screwing over the people that supported you, you know, before you were a big thing. Well, 
it's really weird. Like, I agree with you that these companies that get their start on Kickstarter should be a little more mindful uh, as to where they came from and and acknowledge yeah. that. Not necessarily like say like poll the the Kickstarter users like, hey, should we go with Facebook? More like. Hey, Kickstarters, we know you help this company, but we want to assure you that Facebook buying us is not going to be an issue. Like, I, I never got that sense from the news. Maybe that's the way the news is covering it. Maybe, you know, uh, maybe they actually have addressed this, but it's certainly not coming across in all the media. Um, but it's kind of like, you know, somebody who makes it big on American Idol and then distances himself from American Idol and never even talks about it. Like, I think there was. <laughs> A singer that did that. Mm -hmm. I, have, I can't even remember uh, Carrie Underwood. Underwood, like, yeah. She, yeah, she was from American. And this is a, this is a great comparison, but also adds me as knowing who Carrie Underwood is. <laughs> Ashley's really into country music. Sure, sure. So, so she becomes this huge like artist, but she came from American Idol, but she super distances herself from that, therefore alienating a lot of people mm -hmm. who invested in her while True. she was on that show. So, I but. Kickstarter protects themselves with with these policies saying that this is not an investment platform. Oh and yeah, no, I, Kickstarter is not the yeah at fault in any way here. I don't no. think. Um, I think it's that more of a cautionary protect... tale for backers. You know, like oh, just because you put money into something doesn't necessarily mean that first of all they have to deliver on what they promise, and that mm. includes your reward levels. That includes the um, the product that you're actually backing. Uh, whether it be a physical product or a game or whatever, they don't actually ever have to deliver on anything. You are giving them money on good faith, saying that, yes, you will come through with X, Y, and Z, but they don't have to. There's no, like you said, investment. There is no like legal kind of contract there. Yeah. If they put something up and they don't deliver, then they probably won't be able to use the platform again, but it's purely trust. So, yeah. I just, I think that um, I'm not necessarily Kickstarter needs to change the way they work, but companies that use it need to be more mindful of, of if they are super successful, they need to understand that there is a PR issue where people, money is this wonderful thing that when you use it, in certain circumstances, you feel as though you are contributing to, even though you were given everything that you signed up for. Mm -hmm. it, it's really weird. And it's almost like Kickstarter should go back, should take back what they've said and say, we are a pre-order model. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it is literally you getting a product, pre-ordering it, and that's it. Like, mm -hmm. I don't get any investment by pre-ordering uh, Diablo 3 from Future Shop. I don't get a cut in the company. I True. get the product that I wanted. True. Uh, you know, and so I think I, that product like that. that you want is really kind of nails it right on the head, is that mm -hmm. you give them money to... De develop a product or a service or whatever based on what their Kickstarter campaign is. So if, and again, I didn't back it, I didn't read the campaign that closely, but if Oculus Rift makes a certain promise in their Kickstarter campaign and then I invest in them or I give them money, I back them, whatever you want to call it, and then all of a sudden a year later they get bought by Facebook and they totally change that, it's like, well, you wouldn't be in a position to be bought by Facebook if I hadn't backed you in the first place. So mm -hmm. there's that expectation that you're going to stick to what you said in, well, in your Kickstarter campaign, because mm -hmm. no matter where you end up, you wouldn't have gotten there if it wasn't for all those people that backed you. So it's a really fine line, and I don't know what they're going to do in terms of where Oculus Rift is going to go. I hope they still have a gaming kind of focus. I hope that they still push the product and push the virtual reality space as far as they possibly can. I hope their hands don't get tied by Facebook, but all of this stuff is going to be things that we're going to see as the story develops. So yeah. with all of that said, um, yeah, I think that's, uh, Ryan, do you have any closing, closing thoughts that I think we can just wrap yeah. Well, one one last question is that does this make us more excited for uh, Sony's um, announcement, Project Morpheus, like on the PS4? Like, it's almost like these announcements go hand in hand in the sense that you have the indie darling VR, mm -hmm. you know, plunging into the cesspool that is Facebook in a lot of people's minds. Like, yes, that might yeah. not be the truth, but that is just what people see. And the people is what makes a company, not mm -hmm. the millions of dollars from some you know, corporation, but 
then you have Sony coming in. It's like, we're making one too. And at first, before this Facebook announcement, it was a Me Too thing. But now I'm starting to see it as like, shit, Sony might be building the gamers VR now. Yeah. Now the Oculus has sort of been tainted by this. By Facebook, yeah. You know. And it's true. It's like, it I don't know. literally goes from being an indie thing to, mm -hmm. it's like, well, if there's two corporations, then really what corporation are you going to vote for? Like, yeah. I mean, like with your consumer dollars and, you know, with your faith and everything else, are you going to go for the corporation that is Facebook or the corporation that is Sony? And I mean, I really think Sony's delivered with the PS4 and I, yeah, I, get, I am more excited, I guess, for Sony and what they're going to put forward. Um, Eric Booth in the chat room is saying that the Rift is going to be fine because Facebook left Instagram alone. They did and they didn't. In terms of Instagram, Instagram does not play well with Twitter anymore. It used to be Twitter and Instagram were hand in hand and then Facebook took over. And now it's like everything I try to do with Twitter, it's error, 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 error. Like it just, it does not play well. It's fine with Facebook because, you know, like everything now is integrated. And I just, I don't want Facebook integrated with my gaming. Well, you nailed it because uh, that is super true in the sense that Instagram, you know, as a product, sharing photos works well. But the second you try to integrate it with something that isn't Facebook, it's crippled. It mm -hmm. may work, but it doesn't quite work as well as it does on Facebook. And I don't, yeah. and obviously Facebook being, you know, the, the major investor in Oculus Rift, they, they have to get some sort of value out of it. Yeah. So they're obviously going to favor it on the Facebook platform. So I wonder, like, you know, I'm a big console gamer, and before Morpheus and before Facebook, you know, I took the red pill, and I think the Oculus <laughs> Rift would have been a, 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 a platform that would have worked on a Sony Sony system. Mm -hmm. So now I think the Oculus Rift just exists as a, a PC-only peripheral, and those things don't sell very well, yeah. you know? Would I wonder it, how well it'll do. Yeah, just one other quick thing. Do you think that maybe this is Facebook's first step towards making a Facebook gaming platform? Oh, they tried that already, and, uh, you know, it worked quite well with, like, games like Mafia Wars. And, well, no, 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 no. I, I mean, like, an actual, like, plug into your TV, like, box. Yeah, I mean, there's been talk of, like, you know, Amazon's building one, Google's building one. Like, since the Ouya came out, it seems like... Any company can come out and put a set top box in front of your TV. Um, it certainly gives Facebook an advantage, I mean, uh, over these other uh, companies. So, yeah, in, in not in the near future, but, you know, anything's possible yeah. later on. We'll see, we'll see. So, uh, yeah, if you guys want to show your gamers in pride, head on over to slash loot.com. That is slash as in S-L-A-S-H, not a slash, because, you know, that won't work. That so. wouldn't work. <laughs> that would take you to your directory, and if you have a slash loot, then I doubt you'll find our t-shirts there. Yeah, no, our t-shirts will not be there. So, yeah, that's slash loot.com, spelt out. You can grab a gamers in t-shirt like I am currently wearing. There are also other t-shirts from Fantastic Frog Pants and A-Move shows. So you've got the Angry Chicken over there. We've got Zombies Ate My Podcast. You've got the Morning Stream, the Instance. All those awesome shows are there. There's also some really cool artwork from Mary Varn. You know, like anything your nerdy, geeky self wants on a t-shirt, Slash Loot has got it. So head over, grab one, grab ours. And we really, really appreciate your support as always. Speaking of support, like we mentioned earlier, we have patrons now from our Patreon. So this week we would like to say thank you to David C for being a patron of the Gamers Inn. If you guys want to jump over there and see what you've got, um, our $5 a month reward level actually helps us do Gamers Inn Game Night, which is Thursday nights. We play all kinds of multiplayer games and we stream them. So we have been playing a lot of Diablo, but we don't necessarily have to. You guys will get to vote on the games you guys will get to tell us what you want to watch. And if you pledge $5 a month or more, you'll get to play with us. So come on and game. We want to see you. We want to play with you. And uh, we do thank everyone who becomes a patron of The Gamers Inn. That is patreon.com slash The Gamers Inn. I think that pretty much does it for this week. Ryan, do you have anything else you want to add? I don't know. Go to Patreon. It looks sweet. It's <laughs> such a great. It's such a great platform. I mean... I haven't had a chance to to send my love to it, but uh, it's it's a great extension of the Kickstarter Indiegogo idea, and um, 
I look forward to uh, doing stuff with uh, with all our fellow patrons. That's true. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, we should. I don't know if we did last week, but just in case people aren't aware of actually what Patreon is, which you may or may not be familiar with it, basically what it does is it takes uh, things that are traditionally free, like uh, YouTube videos, like podcasts, um, all those kind of creative type things. Web comics is another one. Mm -hmm. And it gives people a platform to give a certain amount either per creation or per month. So with the Gamers Inn where we have game night and we post a lot of different things, we decided to go with a monthly pledge level. Yeah. So you can give a certain amount of money to a creator, just not necessarily to pay for a product, but just to tell them that you support what they're doing to help out with some of the costs of the supplies. So in the case of the Gamers Inn, it's it's video games, it's bandwidth, it's web hosting, all those kind of things that generally we just kind of pay for because this is our hobby and we love doing it and we love creating content. So Patreon gives you a platform to kind of say thanks and give a couple of bucks a month to help us out so that we can continue to provide awesome content, hopefully provide more content and give you all of the video game reviews that you want to hear. So <laughs> that's basically uh, Patreon in a nutshell. And there's all kinds of really cool projects over there. If you guys haven't checked it out, go, you know, find me. I've backed a couple. Find Ryan. Mm -hmm. He's backed a couple. Uh, Angry Chicken has one. There's a whole bunch of Frog Pants ones up there. There's also, um, I backed that guy who does the um, Smarter Everyday videos on YouTube. No. Man, that guy is good. It's like <laughs> a science topic in five minutes, and he is so entertaining. So are so, you smarter now? I am smarter. I get smarter oh. every day. Good. <laughs> because of that YouTube series. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, head on over to patreon.com slash the gamers in if you want to back us and uh, patreon.com just in general to find out all the awesome things over there. Um, cool. If you'd like to visit us on the web, you can do so at gamersinpodcast.com. You can find us on AMOVE TV along with other fabulous shows, including StarCast, Campaign Roundtable, Biggest Fan, AMOVE Radio, and The Angry Chicken. You can follow us on Twitter. You can find me, Jocelyn, at GIS Gamer, Ryan's at R. Murphy, and don't forget to follow the show over at The Gamers In. The video versions of all our episodes, literally all our episodes now, because I actually uploaded stuff, <laughs> can be found on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Jocelyn Moffat. We're also on Facebook and Google+. If you'd like to email the show and let us know what you think about the Oculus Rift, you can do so at info at gamersandpodcast.com. So before we go, I just want to give a quick shout out and thank you to Greg Moffat for creating our music. You can find him on Twitter at Sounds Influence. We'd also like to thank Joel Duggan, who does all of our graphic work. You can find him and everything he does at joelduggan.com. So thanks for staying at the Gamers Inn, and remember, tune in next week, hopefully at our regular Friday night time. Yeah. <laughs>